Hello everyone. This video is an attempt to provide a visual picture of the Leibniz integral rule over constant limits, which is given by this formula. Let us recollect some fundamentals from calculus before getting into the Leibniz rule. Consider a function f of x equals 2x squared minus x cubed plus 1, whose graph looks like this. Let's say we want to figure out the area underneath this curve, starting from x equals 0 all the way up to x equals 2. If we divide the interval into four equal parts, each corresponding to a width delta x of 0.5, build rectangles with this width and height given by the function value at the interval points, the sum of areas of each of these rectangles is an approximation to the area under the curve. Notice that as delta x is common to all the rectangles, it can be factored out of the sigma notation and it still represents the same thing. If we fit more and more number of narrower rectangles within the same interval, which corresponds to delta x approaching 0, the sum of areas of each of these rectangles converges to the area under the curve that we are looking for. To incorporate the fact that delta x is meant to approach 0, we use a different notation replacing delta x with dx and sigma with the integrand and the limits. That's the idea of an integral. Area under the curve within given limits. Now consider the same function and let's say we want to figure out how sensitive the function is to tiny changes in its input. Starting off at some point p with coordinates a comma f of a, let's say that a change in input by an amount delta x equals 1 causes the output to change by say delta y. Sensitivity at the point p can be seen as the rise over in slope delta y by delta x which after some algebra turns out to be this expression. As delta x approaches 0, this rise over and slope approaches the slope of tangent to the curve at the point p. Also, any term in the expression for slope that is a multiple of delta x can be dropped off as they too approach 0. As in the case of integrals, to incorporate the fact that delta x is meant to approach 0, we use a different notation replacing delta x and delta y with dx and dy respectively. This is what the derivative f dash of x represents. If we know the function for derivative, multiplying its value at a point with the change in input dx gives the change in output of the function dy. Remember that this equation holds only when dx approaches 0, which otherwise is just an approximation. Getting back to the Leibniz rule, focus on what the left hand side of the equation conveys. We have a function f of two variables x and t, and let's say it happens to be this expression. You can think of f of x t as the function f of x itself changing with respect to the variable t. Then we see an integral of this function representing the area under the curve within the given limits. And then we have the derivative of this integral with respect to t which represents the rate at which the area under the curve itself changes with respect to t. So that's what we are looking for. How sensitive is the area under the curve with respect to changes in t? Let's say that a change in t by an amount delta t equals 1 results in a change in area by an amount say delta a. If we approximate area under the curve f of x t with rectangles of equal width touching the curve and sitting in between the integral limits, the aggregate of change in area of each of these rectangles is an approximation to the actual change in area. If we pick one of these rectangles, the change in height delta h can be approximated with the product partial derivative of f with respect to t times delta t. Then this area can be approximated as the product delta h times delta x. Repeating this process with all the rectangles and taking the summation of their areas, we have an approximation to the actual change in area. As delta t is common to all the rectangles, it can be factored out of the summation. Dividing both sides by delta t, we have an approximation for the change in area with respect to t. If you recall from the introduction, letting delta x approach 0 converges the area of these rectangles to the actual area under the curve that we are looking for. And letting delta t approach 0 makes the approximation for the change in height of the rectangles less and less wrong. To incorporate the fact that delta x and delta t are both meant to approach 0, we use a different notation replacing the deltas with d's and sigma with the integrand and the limits. And there it is, the Leibniz integral rule for the case of constant limits.